I'm glad they play because otherwise we would – I mean, only one game? What are we going to do if we only have one game, Rob? Yes. I didn't see that coming because I didn't know how the playoffs were going to go. And I thought it would maybe be, you know, we'd have three or four games. And when I saw only two games, I'm like, man, this is this seems weird. But we can get into that later too. But let's move on to the other team that plays this week, a team that you saw this past Friday, uh, Clear Creek of Mana. Sounded like it was a great game. I was following you on Twitter, and the score was going, you know, back and forth. They were going at each other. Uh, Grinnell pulls out a 31 to 24 win at Clear Creek Amana over in Tiffin. Uh, tough loss for Clear Creek, but uh, you know, I don't think it's you know the death knell for this team. I still think this team could probably do some things in the playoffs, and it certainly drew the pod. Uh, similar to City High, where yes. it has a chance to shock the world, so to speak, or at least Iowa. Uh, Clear Creek opens at or opens against two and four Marion uh, this Friday. And again, we'll preview that more on Wednesday. And then the winner gets Xavier. Uh, talk about a little bit what you saw on Friday night against Grinnell. Obviously, Grinnell has one of the best skill players in the state. I just get I love watching good high school football. As you know, as people that do this do. But I was talking to Gabe Baker after the game, and you know, we exchanged pleasantries, and Gabe's just such a good, such a good guy, such a good person. I, I was like, you know, you're talking to a coach that just lost a heartbreaker, gives up a touchdown with a couple seconds left. And I'm like, man, that was a great game, coach. And he's kind of like, but, but that's how, like, I was excited because it was, it was such a good game, Rob. And it was, you know, we talked about it. It could be 50 to 45 or whatever. And um, the team just went up and down the field running the ball. And basically Grinnell came up with, they had three, they stopped, um, Clear Creek turned it over on downs three times inside the 25, mm. uh, a fourth and four early that I they, that they got three on, and then a fourth and one or two, um, and then a fourth and short late that resulted in the with like four minutes left at like the 15 that resulted in the ensuing you know game winning drive. But um, yeah, they're a couple you know feet away from having the, the one um, with late early early fourth quarter late third quarter I can't remember without my stats in front of me but was inside the five um and they got a stop kind of a true goal line stop um and you know they're a couple feet away from Clear Creek not coasting you know but putting pressure on them right. and having having leads and everything so talking to Gabe Baker after the game it's like he was he was disappointed like you don't want to lose that game but I think he felt like in fact he mentioned to me he's like you know our three losses this year we lose a one-point game at Mount Pleasant in the opener. I, I think I went over all this last week, but where they go 3-0 and in turnover margin and they, they miss a two-point conversion to take the lead late. You lose to Xavier, you know, the number one team in the state, and then and now this, you know, you give up a touchdown with a few seconds left in a game where they felt like they left some points out there. But uh, Wyatt Hunter is really fun running back to watch. I mean, he finishes – He's I think they list him at 210, Rob, and he's – I was interested to see him just because he rushed for 1,500 yards in six games. It's like I, I just wanted to see him. Man, he's, he's, he has straight, really good straightaway speed at, at 200, 210 pounds, and he, finishes, and he finishes runs, but he's really patient. They're in the shotgun a lot. They run a lot of you know, inside-outside zone, and he's really good at letting those blocks develop and then sticking his foot in the ground and getting downhill in a hurry and I mean man he gets to the second level like that and then it's just kind of a you know he's got one or two guys to beat and it's either like he has the ability to you know break tackles or just a couple times he was just like I'm going getting to the edge and they just you know that he, he almost had a couple 70 80 yarders um 60 whatever it was and they just got him out of bounds a couple times but he was first two drives of the game they go um touchdown drive he had like a 40 yard touchdown run Clear Creek goes three and out. They punt it, and they go down, and Clear Creek got a real key stop and forced a field goal. But I looked down at my stat sheet. I haven't had this happen in a while. I looked down at my stat sheet. There's like five minutes left in the first quarter, and this kid's got six carries for like 114 yards. <laughs> and you're just like – at that point, I was kind of like, is he going to go for like – you're like 400 or something is like crazy is on the table here when you get off to that type of start. And then after that, I think they got a lot better at that. It's that initial – 
you know, whether it's a guy in basketball that has incredible range or like a big guy on the post that you kind of have to see him for a little bit before you get that initial, like, okay, like this guy gets up to the secondary a little bit quicker than what anybody we've seen all year. But after that, I think they did a pretty good job on him. But It's tough to see I, that stuff on tape sometimes. And I was interested to see because – you know how it is with, with running backs. It's like, okay, th- their best players are running back. We'll just stack the box. We'll just make right. sure that this guy doesn't beat us. And then I saw what he was able to do Friday night, and I was like, well, you know, I'm sure every team is thinking the same thing. We're just going right. to load up and try to take this kid away. The fact that they've not been able to do that is really impressive. And it was interesting. Um, they didn't have their starting quarterback, which is, um, you know, I mentioned this before. Well, former West High coach Brian Souser is their coach, and uh, one of his sons is an offensive tackle um, that, that's a that's a really nice player. Big kid, moves pretty well. Played a ton of snaps on both sides of the ball because both teams ran it so well. And, and Clear Creek had so many long drives, and he's playing on the defensive line. Clear Creek ran something crazy for number of plays. You know, they ran like seventy offensive plays because they had like thirty first downs because they're just you know getting five, six, seven chunks. But it was really a, a tough game, I'm sure, to be a lineman, you know, playing that many snaps both ways. Yeah. But his other son is their starting quarterback. He didn't play. Um, talking to the Grinnell radio guys, he's been dealing with the injury. So he didn't play. So they had a senior that kind of stepped in at quarterback. That I, and they were just – it was just a lot of read game. He ran for over 100 yards too, but he was just way more of a running threat. So I'm sitting – as I was watching the game, I, I just – you can't, you can't help but think, like, does that make Hunter more potent as a runner that now they have the option that this guy's more of a running threat than their other quarterback? You know, because they're running a lot of that read option. He, was, he did a really good job of running that stuff. Or does it make him – does it make it easier to stack the box because there was less of a threat of them, you know, getting right. anything over the top in the pass game? So I don't know that, having only seen Grinnell once. But I'm with you. you you just assume to see nine guys as close as you can get to the line of scrimmage, basically. And they did that a couple of times. And he's, that was the patience. He's still able to, he had, you know, they mixed in some one and two yard gains on him, but man, just a lot of 10 to 20 yard gains where you just, you think you have him. And then it's kind of, it's not as exaggerated as the stretch play that Iowa runs where they're running back to you're like, man, they're stringing it out. They're stringing it out. And then they get their foot in the ground. They just find that one little crease. But that, that's kind of what it reminded me of where you're like, you know, he's running, they have him running sideways and then he would just get that one little creak and crease and turn it up and, and could get, you know, 10 yards in a hurry. But I still really like Clear Creek, Rob. I do. Well, uh, fortunately for them, they won't have to see that kid this week and, and the week after. But I guess, um, you know, like we said, and we'll touch on this more on, on Wednesday when we preview uh, their pod and their first game against Marion. But if you're Clear Creek, you just – you got to put that one like City High. You got to put that one in the rearview mirror and say, listen, we've got a chance here to really put together a season to remember with the opportunities that sit in front of us. Right. And that's – I mean, look, I'm sure every coach in 3A on the eastern side of the state was sitting there on Friday night after their game. Well, please don't. Going, please don't put we just, Xavier. We just got to avoid Xavier, right? <laughs> no. And I'm not saying that they can't be beaten. I no. haven't seen Xavier this year. But as we talked about, Coach Schultz, they're, they're the gold standard in that class. Right. right. And, you're, and I'm sure there's a bunch of Class A coaches that were like, we just got to avoid Regina. And I'm sure there's, you know, I mean, it's kind of, yeah. kind of the same thing for every class. You don't want to play them. But at the same time, I think it helped, assuming that Clear Creek can get by Marion, and I'll, we'll do a deeper dive into Marion on Wednesday. We'll look at them. They're having a much better year. They were, they were really down for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. They have some good wins. They've been in a lot of games. So don't, don't take that one for granted, right. I would say. But, again, I like Clear Creek because of the things we talked about in the past. Defensively, they have some, they have some uh, balance on offense. But – and I have the utmost respect for their coaching staff as well. Those guys really do a good job. But I just think if you are going to look ahead, which is what we're allowed to do, every time somebody says that, it's like, oh, you got to take it one game at a time. I'm like, I don't. I don't play. I can look all the way to the state championship game, and it's not going to affect my, te- my teams because I'm not practicing today, thank goodness, because I'd blow every – like, I'd just be – I wouldn't move for a week if I tried to do one football practice. But, 
we can look ahead, Rob, and I think it helps them that they played Xavier. I really do. It's one of those things. I've said this for years about uh, Regina in the Uni Dome. They would jump on a lot of those teams because it took those teams a, a quarter or so to adjust to, you know, to the level that Regina was playing at. And Regina would get to that level because they were playing, you know, Solon and, and Xavier early in the season. And I, I think that that – I didn't see that first game, but I think – Clear Creek can go up to Xavier, assuming they get that rematch, and walk onto that field and not, you know, not need that quarter to adjust. I'm not even talking about being intimidated, but I'm just saying they don't – because Xavier, man, they are going to come at you in their intensity and their physicality and the pad level they play at and all that stuff. It's going to be on point because it always is. And sometimes it takes teams a little bit to adjust to that. And I think Clear Creek can spend that entire week preparing for that game, knowing you have to match their physicality. Yep. I mean, you have to match their physicality. And that's, we can talk about that. You can talk about it all week, but I think now they know what they have to do to do it. They still have to go do it, but I think they know now. And that, look, that wasn't, that wasn't, I think it was 30 to seven. You know, that wasn't a, you know, 45 to zero game. I think they can play with them. You got to make, you're going to have to make plays. You might need a break or two, but I still really like their offense, Rob. They, Ryan Navarro ran for over 100 yards last week. They took – Grinnell did a really good job of taking away a lot of their stuff over the top in their passing game and they kind of not allowed them but forced them to, to march it down the field on them, kind of played some of that deep shell defense where they said, you know, you're not going to get big plays. And mm-hmm. you know, we had talked about their ability to get big plays in the past game. And they went to a lot of quarterback run. I think they rushed for a season high. Um, if I remember right, they had – almost 300 yards rushing, and they just took those five 10-yard chunks. Alex Figueroa was really good again. He's close to 1,000 yards in seven games. I got to total it up and see where he's at. I think he's around 900. But he's a really good back. They took away the big plays, and they marched it. And then, you know, I guess you could say it worked for Grinnell because they came up with a couple of those, you know, key stops. But I like their offense, man. I really do. And I think they're good enough on defense, um, especially in the back end. They got to – they got to be able to stop the run, you know, going forward. But I, maybe I'm, I don't know. I, I obviously we want our teams to do well. Some there's just something about that team as I talk to them too. I just feel like they have a little bit of that it factor, you know, like like they have just enough of that swagger that they could that they're a really dangerous team in the postseason. I just really do. I get I get a vibe from that team that that they're not going to be deterred by this game. That they really I. I I don't know. You ever, I, I just get that sense that there's something about this team that they feel like they can beat anybody. Yeah. And they're going to get a chance to beat uh, really somebody if they can get by Marion on Friday and that Xavier. But uh, we'll break, like we talked about, we'll break down the Marion game on Wednesday a little, you know, give you, get you, uh, you know, familiarized with Marion a little bit more and uh, maybe look ahead a little bit to, that matchup yeah. and, and what lies ahead for both of those teams provided uh, they can come through that. Um, so that's Friday night in Tiffin. Uh, Marion will be at Clear Creek. 